For those who've been watching my channel over the last couple of years, I've mentioned a neighbor up at my cottage has been constantly harassing us over property line issues. And this became a problem. A couple of months ago, I had to call the cops on her because she's yelling at me over at my property, taking pictures. I don't get it personally. I just don't get it. They were told a number of times by my lawyer, by the police before, by the survey company, just wait, but they won't wait. They just constantly harass us. You know, it's almost like it's, uh, was it Yellowstone there? You know, they're gonna fight you to get the property. You know, they're gonna like take us over like the old school, like in the, I don't know, in the 1800s. This is my land, I'm gonna take it. It's, it's kind of like that. It's just crazy behavior. But the thing is, I'm, I'm constantly reminded of it every time I go up to my cottage. We bought the cottage for peace of mind and some serenity from the, from the hustle and bustle of daily life. But every time I go up there, guess what? They're out there patrolling it, patrolling it. Don't let them take that little piece of land. It's, it's, just, it's just nuts. But the, the, the crazy part about it, not the crazy part about it, but the reality of it, it's been very difficult for myself and, and Brenda. It's been very, very difficult. But the thing about me, I've been nursing this resentment over the last couple of years, thinking that I could handle it and I thinking that I would just get over it because, you know, after all, it's going to solve itself, right? But it's taken a long time. And the thing about resentments, it just keeps adding on and building up. Resentment is just like a bad commercial. It just keeps playing over and over in my head. I have revengeous thoughts about getting them back. I'll get them back legally. I'll take them to court. I'll sue their ass. I'll do all this kind of stuff but it's just imaginary in my mind. I'm just thinking about this, how to get them back. And you know, revenge is the most terrible thing, eh? To revenge on somebody. You know, the best revenge is have a good life and just let them be. That's the, good, the best revenge, right? So the other day, I think I can handle this resentment. I'm driving down the road on my way to the cottage and I decide to have a conversation with Brenda about this resentment. But to make a long story short, anything she said, but it came out the wrong way and I thought she was defending them. And you know, when you have a really bad resentment, if the people you're talking to start to defend the other people, yeah, it doesn't go over well. But anyways, it was not a big yelling match, but I felt myself losing it mentally, emotionally, and physical. I could barely drive the car. That's how strong this resentment is. But you know, resentment makes you angry. It can make you depressed. It can make you relapse. I ended up in jail one time over a resentment back in about 30 years ago. I'm not kidding you. I went berserk and I ended up in jail. And I had like, what, 14, nine months or 14 months of sobriety. Such a long time ago. Resentments are the number one killer of sobriety and the number one killer of people going out and relapsing. We need to do something about the resentment. Some resentments are easier to get rid of than others, but this one obviously was more difficult. In the books of recovery, they say pray for your enemy. Pray for them for two weeks that they get what you want, like a happy life, happy life, uh, healthy life. You know, all the good things that you want in your life, you, you pray for them to get that, and that sort of loses its punch and the focus. And you know something? That really works. That really works. Or do mindfulness for them. Do something that will release you from that awful resentment. But that's all you can do. You can talk to people about it, talk to people in the group. One thing about, resent one thing about resentments, when you go to a, a meeting, people can really relate to resentments. So you get a lot of positive feedback. And once you start talking about the resentment out loud, it starts going away. It starts losing its power. It really does. So. Resentments are not talked a lot about anymore. You don't hear too much about resentments for, for whatever reasons, but they do exist and people have resentments. There's no way you're gonna go through your life and not have a grudge on, hey but not have a grudge on about to, to somebody that you deal with throughout your life. Either it's family members, work partners, uh, whoever it is, you're gonna have problems with people and you're gonna have resentments. Like I say, some are easy, some are big to get rid of, some are harder, and, but they, you must get, oh shit, I'm trying to take my shoes off. But you must deal with them, okay? Living in sobriety and leading a good life can be hard as hell at times. It can be hard 
as hell at times and really difficult. But you learn the tools and you learn how to do it. You can live one day at a time, relatively happy most days, and a peace of mind and a content of life. You really can. Pick up the tools, you have resentments, pick up the tools, do an inventory, talk to your sponsor, mention it in a group, pray for the people, do all you can to relieve yourself of the resentments. Because a lot of the resentment, it might've happened, the event happened, but it's only us who's being tortured. It's like, we're giving them the poison, but we're dying from it. Okay, we want them to, sorry, we want them to die, but we're drinking the poison. Okay, so God bless. Thanks a lot. I just want to let you know what's going on in my life and just let you know that just because I have long-term sobriety, my life is not perfect either. It is not perfect. It really isn't. Okay. Ciao for now. I'll talk to you later. God bless. And remember, subscribe, hit that like, but remember sobriety is freedom. Sobriety is freedom. God bless.